Hello. <laughs> Let me see if I can zoom in. Okay, that's way too close. Happy Saturday, everyone. There's such a delay. I have such a hard time with this. Anybody here? So this is my second live video and I'm still not very good at it. <laughs> Bear with me. I want to make sure you can see my whole design. So I wanted to start out today showing you how I attach my weaver's cloth to this frame because this is a new one I'm going to start. See, I don't see any comments either. Oh, there are the comments, okay. Quilting Queen 3, hello. Anything blue, hello. I have so much fun on a Saturday morning. Yeah, you should have saw how crazy I was trying to get ready for this. Because I wanted to show you a few things It says, yes, can't hear you. So there's no volume. Let's see. I'm gonna turn my volume on. Let's see. I'm gonna turn my volume on. Okay, so I, I have it showing on my laptop sitting here next to me. So if you don't hear me, then check the volume on your device. God, you know, last time I did this, I could see the comments and I could see the video as well, but for some reason it's not doing that for me this time. Hi Patty, hi Crystal. Pop out chat, maybe that's what I want. There we go. You guys, I learned so much. <laughs> One of these days, I'm just gonna start a live video and have all my ducks in a row. All right, so now I can see my video to make sure that I'm showing. Because see, the way my phone is set up, I cannot see the screen or I can't see your comments. So I have to have my laptop next to me. And my husband says last time, he's like, you know you can show that on the TV screen. I'm like, what? I don't know how to do that either. So, good morning, Linda. Stitching with my bestie. Good morning, I watch your floss tubes and I love them. Okay, so I'm gonna get started. I just traced this and while I traced it, I did a little video that I'll probably put at the end of my next floss tube video because I get people that ask me how to trace the image onto the weaver's cloth. So I thought I would show that. This is a painting I did. This is actually just a copy of the painting, but it's a large, like, oh, gal, maybe 11 by 14, I think, was the size I painted it for my Cobit Studio Uncut that I don't have anymore. But um, I love this design, and I've been wanting to do this in cross-stitch and punch needle forever, so I decided, hey, it is Halloween time. Today is... October 19th, 2019, Saturday, 11 a.m., Eastern Standard Time, and I thought, why not? So I traced that on to my weaver's cloth, and last time I did the live video, somebody asked me how I attached this to my frame. Again, this is a stretcher 
bars that you can get at any art supply store, but I get mine on Amazon. Masterpiece is the brand that I purchase, and this is an 11 by 14. And this is actually made so the artist stretch canvas over it and then paint on it, but I like these for my punch needle. And so I put them together. You can kind of see down. Hold on. I don't know if you can see it. Down in here. It's like tongue, tongue and groove. So you put those together. And then I just use an industrial staple gun. Well, I guess it's not industrial, but whatever. A staple gun. And I staple a couple staples in each corner. And then I use a regular stapler open it up and this might be hard to do in my lab I normally do this on a hard surface I'm gonna see if I can zoom out a little bit let's just see if I did it right there's such a delay like once I zoom out I have to wait a while so it shows up on my computer so I see if I actually zoomed out I don't think anything happened let's try it again See if that worked. <laughs> so I zoomed in. Good Lord. This is not easy, guys. As you can tell, I'm struggling. See if that worked. Okay. So I start over on this side. And I just slam it. And then I don't normally have to turn it, but since I'm sitting, I have to. And I don't pull it too tight. I just pull it so that it will be, you know, snug. And sometimes these first staples, you might have to remove them once you get going. And then I turn it like this. And I'll do, oh, this, I've got this side way too close to the edge, see? I'm glad that that happened just so you can see. You know what happens sometimes <laughs> so you got to make sure that your image is not too close to the edge of your stretcher bars so we're just going to start here instead hi beth Hi, Tina. Hi, Linda. Just had to pause so I can see if there's any questions so far. Probably flipping this around is making me sick. So I apologize. All right, so you can like right in the center, see how it's kind of bouncy. That's, that's a good, you don't want it super tight on this particular frame okay so let me just back up if you're using a hoop the reason i quit using a hoop is because as you punch if you are using a hoop it will loosen even the interlocking frame the morgan no slip hoop that's what i used to use all the time before i started using this and ultimately it slips because you're punching and as you are filling this in with your embroidery floss it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter so it does loosen up but it that's why I switched to this because once you staple this down, it's not going to move because it, nothing makes me more aggravated than when I have to constantly re-tighten my hoop. Okay, so here's another tip as you're doing this. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Actually, you can. Okay, so I can see this. This is my line that I've, I've drawn and then you can see underneath the stretcher bar. So that kind of gives you, you know, I can see how much space I have here. I want to make sure that I don't have it, let's say, like this. I want to make sure I have the same distance between here as I do here. So that way I know that line's going to be straight. And it's not, you know, this is not that hard. I hope I'm not making this look difficult. So I'm just going to finish up this side and make sure this side is nice and straight and I you know I will um, go in later and add more staples but for now 
because in case I have to take those out, I'm just going to put a few in. Um, I talked last time I did the live video about getting uh, like a rug hooking frame, or they actually do make rug hooking frames small enough for punch needle now. Um, if you go to Etsy and search, I think you would search like punch needle frames. I think you would find them there. And they're reasonably priced. And those are nice too. They also will not, your, your piece will not move and slip in that. Now see, I can tell now that this one is too tight. So I'm gonna take that one out. Now I do is pull it. Well, I don't have my pliers over here. Oh, that one wiggles out. Rotate and then do this one. Let's start here. So as you can see this line, see how it's right about center, it comes this way too much, but that's when you pull it and you staple it and make that line straight. All right, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go in and fill in now where I can add, you know, you can see where you can add some more staples. I like a lot of staples because, like I said, I don't want this to move as I'm working. So you can see this dips here a little bit, but that's okay because that's why I'm adding more staples in. You just pull the cloth until the line is straight. All right, and then we got this side, and then I'll be done. Hi, Emily Who too. <laughs> hello from Midland. That's so cool. Another Michigander. Cheryl, hello. I'm sure this is a dumb question, but where do you get the fabric? My patterns come with the weaver's cloth in it. I also sell... 13 by 15 pieces of weaver's cloth for $1.50 each. Other than that, I've heard you can get it at Joanne, but my Joanne doesn't have it. And I don't know if they were just out of stock that time I looked, but they didn't have it. Okay, here we go. Look how nice and tight that is. And that will not move. And I, there's probably other people that sell pieces of weaver's cloth, too. Um, if you went to Etsy and just did a search for a weaver's cloth, you might be able to find that. But, you know, I have an Etsy shop, and I do sell them on my Etsy shop. And again, you know, my patterns come with uh, the weaver's cloth inside, but not all patterns do. So when you do purchase a pattern, you, you might want to... You know, make read the description and everything, and just make sure that the weaver's cloth comes with it. Otherwise, you're going to want to purchase some. So that's it. That's how I attach that. So I'm not going to work on this one. I'm going to get the other one out. I just wanted to show you how to attach that. But oh, let me show you my floss colors. Oh Lord, it's going to be awesome. Of course, now I got to find them. What did I do with it? Oh man, I gotta get up. I'm sorry guys. Hold on a second. Okay, so I have not bit the bullet in started investing in project bags. <laughs> I use these. I have these for my artwork. I put them in these bags. Anyways, I have a ton of these and I just feel like I might as well use them. But let's check this out. 
Look at these colors. I'm super excited. I don't normally use bright greens like this, but I think on that black, it will be stunning. And then I have like, a, I don't even know if I need all these, but this is Carrot by Weak Style Works. These are um, Grasshopper. I've never used Moss and gra Grasshopper. That's what, oh wait, I got three. Hold on. So I got, I've got um, Guacamole, Grasshopper, and Moss. So those are my greens. Let's see, okay, and then carrot. And you can see how juicy this looks together. And then some DMC for the, the lighter parts. And then for the lines, I've got some darker colors. Look at these colors, you guys. And then for the flags and this part, I've got some nice DMCs. And then I'm gonna mix for the background. I like an interesting background, so I decided to do a few different colors. This is molasses, which is browns and blacks, and then I've got the DMC 310, and then this one is DMC 3021. So I think, and I might get more of those, but that way, as you do your background and you do these swirls, and you'll, it'll have a pattern to it, kind of like rug hooking. So look, isn't that nice? I can't wait to see that. Done. <laughs> All right, this is how much I've gotten done since the last time we did a punch with me video. I love. I was. I wasn't sure what color I was going to do the flowers. I was going to do yellow like a goldenrod color or sunflower type of yellow. But I thought it would be too bright and I don't want the flowers to be the focal point. I want this to be very primitive. So I, I did, I went with, uh, it's kind of a tomato red, uh, 918. And then I was, just, I was going to, this morning I went down to the studio and I grabbed these Lancaster red because I was going to do the barn in that but then and it was kind of it was still dark out I mean it's like five o'clock in the morning and I was looking at just the light in the studio it was it was bad lighting basically and I thought these were better together but now that I brought it up here and it's daylight out I'm like nope clash I don't like that so I'm gonna stick with 918 and thank god I had another skein of it and I hope I have another skein of it because I have to do the barn in the house and there's no way that I have enough left just in that skein but okay so I also told you that I would show you how to use the ultra punch so I'm going to thread and do a little punching with the ultra punch but I'm just gonna do it off to the side and then rip it out just because I want everything to be the same length so I will go back to my CTR but I just wanted to show you. So when you purchase the Ultra Punch, uh oh, when you purchase the Ultra Punch, I sell the three needle set. So you'll have. Let me just get the instructions out. It comes with, I believe it comes with the small needle inside, yes. So the small needle, the, their book is so helpful. It talks about sculpturing, which is when you do different lengths of hoops. I personally, when I started, when I started Punch Needle, I used the ultra punch and I always punched on one that's the shortest loops but you can change it up and it talks about that in their book but the small let's see I hope it says here well, that's just showing how to change it out right here the small needle works with two to three strands of embroidery floss so I believe when you get your needle the small one is already in there and it's easy easy enough to tell by just holding it up up to the other two 
you also get two threaders and you get a spring in case the spring that's inside here you lose it or you break it and then here's the other two needles so you can see the difference so for for three strands you want the small needle and you want to set it on number one I think Liz Matthews sets hers on two so it's personal preference okay same concept as the CTR you take the threader and you put it up the shaft of the needle and it's hollow all the way through you take your embroidery <laughs> embroidery floss put it through and then you kind of pull it there's it's the uh, threader it has a little twist at the end so that you're it holds the floss. Now, on the CTR, you can just turn your needle and push it through. You can't do that with the Ultra Punch. So then you unhook it, and then you go through the back side. Remember, I talked about the back side being the flat side, and the front side of your needle is the beveled side. So you go through that little hole through the back side of the needle. through there again, pull it tight, and then pull it through, and you are good to go. I usually leave just, you know, a short amount of tail as I can, because otherwise you're just wasting that. And it's the same exact thing. You have the beveled side away from your hand, and you push in, until it won't go in anymore, pull it out, slide it over, push it in. Another question that people ask me a lot is, do you punch inside the line, outside the line, on the line? I punch on the line. But let's say you're punching you know, this moon, for instance, and you want the moon to be big, slightly bigger, well, punch outside the line. If you want the moon to be slightly smaller, punch inside the line. I mean, you know, it's, it's again, personal preference, but I want it as close to uh, the drawing as possible. Therefore, I just punch right on the line. Okay, so same thing. And it punches very nicely. And then let me pull this out and cut it. We'll flip it over and maybe you can see the difference in the height of the loop on the other side. I probably should have cut that so close I was going to pull it out. Okay, let's see if we can get a close enough picture so you can see it. So it is a little bit longer than the loop length that I'm doing with my CTR. I don't know if you can see it very well. <laughs> There's such a delay. I'm looking at my computer and I'm trying to show you this. Does that help? I moved the light over. Can you see it now? So anyway, it's just a little bit longer than the loops I was doing with the CTR. Okay, so I'm going to pull that out. Sometimes it gets hooked up. I don't really know why, but it does. There we go. Now, if for, I thought of this after I frogged last week. I want to mention to you, if it's, if it's stuck, do not force it, because that could be another way to get a hole in your weaver's cloth. And then you have a whole another mess to deal with. I don't even know how you'd repair that because I've never had to. But just let me. Uh, if you just keep messing with it, it will come out. There we go. All right. So I'm going to put this needle away and get my CTR back out. Oh, I also 
I wanted to mention, I don't have this available on my Etsy shop yet, but I, in case your needle ever gets dull, I mean, if you're using the Ultra Punch and it just isn't working properly, let's, you know, if you've been using it for a year or two, and, and that's going to depend too on how often you do punch needle, but if it feels like it's getting dull, I'm going to sell the small needle replacement needle in my Etsy shop for that reason, okay? So when you get your CTR needle, this is how it's going to come. And Kristen, the lady that designed this needle, was so sweet. She put my artwork or my punch needle on her cover with my website. That was so sweet of her. And she's going to call me. She, she emailed me and said, I have some exciting things I'm working on and I want to talk to you about it. I have no idea what she's talking about. And anyway, I haven't heard from her and I just placed another order and she said, I'm so sorry I haven't called you yet. It's been so busy, but I don't know what she's doing, but I'm excited. Okay. So when you get your needle from, hopefully you order it from me, <laughs> I have them on my Etsy shop you get one threader, which if I were you, I would order the threader accessory kit, the extra threaders as well. I do have those on my Etsy shop too. You get five new threaders in this, okay? Because only having one you know, if you break it or you lose it. I mean, I had my cat when I had a cat. She bit it one time and just broke it. So, you know, if you're in the middle of punching and you're enjoying yourself and your threader, or yeah, your threader breaks and you don't have another one. Yeah, that's not fun. Okay, so you're going to get, you know what? I should have a white surface so you can see this better. Remember I talked about putting that plastic gauge on there so that your loops are shorter? I put a picture on my business Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash Teresa Kogut. And there's a picture on there and I show you what I've done. But basically from the shaft of the needle to the end of my gauge is 5 sixteenths of an inch. And this piece right here that I added myself is one eighth of an inch, okay? So when you get your needle, it's gonna be like this. It's gonna roll on you. <laughs> it's still rolling. Dog on it. I have stuff rolling all over the place. All right, so this is the gauge that I'm talking about you want to lay this next to a ruler and then use, like if you have a Zacto blade or um, utility knife or just a sharp knife out of your kitchen, which that's like taboo to people that are really into cooking, but <laughs> just anyways, lay that next to a ruler and then just cut an eighth of an inch off and you have extra in case you screw it up. And then just, you'll just slide that right on the end of your needle and then you'll have the same height loops as I do okay and then also this is a pencil gripper that I put on mine just to for added comfort and added grip all right so let me put this stuff back oh shoot there's a little rubber protector So I had a blast, as you can see, I did a lot of punching, 
and this really wasn't like a ton of hours either. Uh, <clears throat> I had Ellery on Thursday and the poor babe was sick and I woke up at four o'clock that morning and I could not go back to sleep. And I, cause I was thinking, well, when Ellery takes her nap, I'll just take a nap too. Well, that didn't happen because the poor babe was sick and she was coughing so much. I ended up holding her so she could get a good nap and I could not sleep. I was sweating <laughs> holding that baby. But anyway, so I didn't, in a lot, I was going to, after I took my nap, I was going to do some punching. But anyway, so I just haven't had a lot of time to punch, but I still have gotten a lot done. So that kind of tells you how fast it goes. Let me pause here for a second and look at some comments. Hi, Deanna from Michigan. Hi, Patty. My biggest question is how far do you space the stitches? Okay, I'll show you that in a minute. Cowboy Corner. Hello from Iowa. You have so much energy and passion for your skills. Love watching you. Thank you. Bread and Thread by Sean Wright. Hello, Sean. Love this pattern. Thank you. Hi, Joe. Hi, Gabriella. Hi, Michelle. Where do you get the gripper for the CTR? You can get it like at Staples. Um, there are, you know, you might want to take your needle with you because I did a class. I normally bring these, a bunch of these with me when I teach a class so that all the students, I just give them one. Well, this one time I didn't have any and completely forgot about it. So, uh, Colette's husband, Mark, went out and bought some. Well, evidently, there's different size ones because they were so hard to get on the needles. And some of the ladies were like, this is too hard. I'm just not going to put it on. So I didn't realize there must be different sizes. But I guess I've been lucky because I've bought them a few times. And I, they've always went on. I mean, they go on hard, but not super hard. And you want it to go on hard. Otherwise, it's going to move around. Then. So it needs to be tight. But yeah, just staples, um, any kind of office supply place. Oops, you jumped down the rabbit hole because, oh yeah. Or, or what do you say, um, squirrel? <laughs> Can you add the spacer to the ultra? That's a good question, I don't know. The ultra punch does not come with it, so you would have to purchase I mean, you know what? It probably would. No, it's it's a thicker, they, you can see that their needle, the Ultra Punch is a thicker needle. You know what, I have a little piece. Let me just try it real quick. I don't know if you can hear them down there pounding on the roof down at the studio. And my dog has been so good. I thought she would bark at them all day long, but she's been really good. Yeah, it, it does go on there. So that's interesting. Thanks for asking that question. I would have never, never thought of that. But the only place I know where to get those gauges is uh, CTR. So you'd have to buy, you know, you'd have to buy both needles. I don't know. That, I don't think they sell just the gauges. Maybe I'll have to look that up and see if CTR sells the gauges alone. But I think they do have, like I have this thread, I sell this threader kit where you get the five threaders. But they also sell a threader kit that has the gauges in it as well. So... That's a thought. Okay, any more questions? Where do you get the, okay, there you go. Is it more cost effective to use DF, DMC over Valdani? Absolutely, DMC is way less expensive than Valdani. Are you concerned with the grain of the fabric when tracing your pattern? Absolutely not. No, and you know what? 
I noticed when I was punching this morning and I wanted to fix it before I started my live video. So as you can see, as I've been punching, see how tight this is getting? It's pulling, my line is not straight anymore. But all I, all I have to do is just add another staple right there. Oops, not like that though. Hold it like this. <laughs> it's so Cro-Magnum. And you can see also how this is dipping down. So remember I said last time in my video that as you fill this in, it's getting tighter and tighter. And a lot of times these will flare out. Matter of fact, this whole thing, I'm probably going to have to transfer to a bigger frame. I don't have a bigger frame. I have them on order because look how close that is to the wood part. It's, I'm probably going to have to transfer this or just not do the border as wide as it's showing. That's, that's another option. So I'm just going to add a few more staples to, to sew this up to make it a little bit tighter. That one didn't go on so good. Oh my gosh, my staples aren't even going in good. Okay, this one. Okay, that looks pretty good. One more right here. Okay. So somebody asked, let me see, where did that go? Somebody asked how far over to do the stitch, like, um, yeah, Patty Rocky Mountain Stitcher. My biggest question is how far do you space the stitches? Well, it's, it's kind of, you get into a rhythm. Let me zoom in so you can see better. Let's see. If I zoom in, I pull it this way. I can't even see my screen, guys. Maybe a little more. Let me know if you need me to zoom it in even more. Okay, so, so I punch in until it doesn't go in anymore. When I pull it out, this is another thing. I, I mentioned last time that I have my hand resting on my punch needle, or on my weaver's cloth in the frame. But what I'm kind of holding it, as you can tell, at an angle of, away from my body so that when it comes out, I, I'm, it's naturally wants to slide across the fabric. Like I'm moving it in that direction. I don't lift it off the weaver's cloth and I just move it over a little bit and push it back down. So yeah, let me see if I can, I mean, there's not really any way to measure that. It's probably like a 16th of an inch, but it's more about just practicing and getting that feeling down. And you'll know if you're going over too far because when you flip it over, your stitches, they either won't hold or they'll be super uneven if you're not getting them. Like if you're moving over too far one time and not enough the next time. But it just comes with practice. And this is a DMC color, so there's no variegation. So Keep that in mind too. If you're using DMC and it's not a variegated thread, it doesn't matter what direction you punch in because you're not gonna have lines or a pattern to it. Staples coming back to home. And I always trim these little pieces off. When, I, when I'm teaching a class and I go like person to person and it, help them or see if they have any questions. Sometimes they turn their project over. I wonder if that light is too bright. Let's see if that makes a difference. Oh yeah, that's not good. That's even more green. Okay. But sometimes they'll turn their project over and they have all these little ends just sticking up everywhere. That to me is a nightmare, but to each his own, right? So sometimes I, I hold it and pull it out and cut it, and then sometimes I just pull it out and cut it like you just saw me do. So uh, whatever you're comfortable with, I can see where 
I might have space in this fill bin. So I just go back in, fill it in. The only problem with doing it that way is your tail's super short and you can end up pulling that out. So here's your finished side. These windows don't show up that much, but again, I want this to be really primitive. So hopefully I can get this house finished while we're doing the punch with me. And I was gonna set my timer for an hour. I got a little bit of a late start, so it's been about 45 minutes. All right, so I am done. Well, actually, while I have that color in, this is another thing I, I try to do is, instead of taking this out since I'm done with this area, instead of taking that color out, I usually look at the pattern like if I'm not looking at a pattern because I'm, I'm designing this or coloring it as I go. But when you're looking at your pattern, you can say, okay, where else am I gonna use this color? I might as well punch that now. So I know that I want to use that color on the lines in the barn and I only have a few more to go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and punch those lines right now. I think the mail ladies here and I have packages on the front, I'm warning you, <laughs> packages on the front porch that need picked up. So if my dog hears her, she's gonna go batshit crazy like she did last time. And all y'all's dogs are gonna be barking. Oh, maybe she's laying in on my bed, so maybe she won't hear us. Here's another thing. See, I think of these tips as I'm going along. I, you know, my, st my floss a lot of times is kind of wadded up on my project. And as you can see, it's you want to check, look at you at the end of your needle once in a while because I just noticed that this big wad is going down in there. That will go down in here. Once it gets down here, it gets like knotted and you'll be punching along and you'll notice your loops aren't staying or your stitches aren't staying. So you want to make sure as it's going in that it's not knotted up. And if it does do that, all you do is just cut it and then pull it out and then you'll see where there's a knot. Sometimes you can get the knot out and other times it's in there so bad that you just have to cut it and throw that piece away. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Gabriella and Arina. So Deanna, she says, hi from Michigan. Where are you in Michigan? I had to film my floss tube today too. So pretty much when I'm done with this, punch with me video, I'm going to be doing my floss tube video. <laughs> How many people do we have on? 48. So not as many as I had last week. What day was I doing that? Was that last Wednesday? I don't remember. Tuesday or Wednesday. I, I had, I think, up to like 90 some people. So I thought maybe a Saturday would be better because, you know, people might not be at work. But. <coughs> Athena. She's um, scared. <coughs> Athena, come here. Athena. <coughs> Shh. I'm sorry, you guys. What happened is. She scanned the packages while she was standing on the porch and that high-pitched scanning noise. Athena heard that. If she, she wanted to scan the packages on the porch, she wouldn't happen. Athena, come here. Shh. Athena. My dog 
dog is so sweet, but she sounds so mean and ferocious. Come here. Athena, heal. Get over here. Come here. protecting me, aren't you? You're a good girl. You're a good girl. Oh, shoot. I just moved my camera, sorry. Okay. Shh. Be a good girl. Shh. Okay. Oh, gosh. There she goes again. All right. Now, back to the house. left in there. So I'm threading another color, that 918 DMC. She's going back to lay on my bed. It's going to get peaceful again. I was just looking to see if there's any more questions. All right. So what I like to do is, well, you can see I did the outline here going around the door. And then I will go around each window and then I fill in. Make sure I'm in this camera here. And as you can see, I wasn't on a line. And a lot of times that happens when you are looking at it from a different angle. That's why I like to punch away from myself. Because, well, I just was punching away from myself. I think it's because my light is coming in this way and it's creating a shadow. And so when I turn it this way, I'm like, oh yeah, I totally missed that line. But it's no big deal. You just go back and fill it in. sure I'm in the screen. That's the only thing I don't like about um, being so zoomed in is when I move my project around a lot of times you can't see what I'm doing. So I have some fun things planned for Tuesday night 9 p.m. Eastern, Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to be doing the live drawing for the winners. I have three prizes and they're pretty darn nice prizes. One, the grand prize is an original painting. But I'm enlisting my husband to help me with the live video so that we can just have a lot of fun with it. So make sure that you can be there um, on the live video. It's going to be fun, and hey, it would be so cool if you were there live and you won. I'm going to zoom out because I can see that I keep going off camera. Um, i got to think about this when I zoom in. I think I zoom out that way. Any other questions? Dang it, I zoomed in. gosh everything is like it's so opposite of what you're used to that isn't it either did it zoom out jeez louise so 
So there's not many people asking questions. I just want to know if you're there. Let's just say, hey, still here. Hey, I can still hear you. There we go. Finally. Let me know if you like that view better or would you rather have it zoomed in like I had it. Anywho, since I'm not, I don't have any instructions right now, I don't have any questions to answer, I'm going to finish up my little story about having Ellery on Thursday. So this past Thursday when I had Ellery, in case, in case you don't watch my Floss Tube videos and you're saying, who's Ellery, what is this all about? Ellery is our first grandchild and she is, God, let me see. How many months old is she? Wow, she's almost a year and a half. She's a year and five months old. Jeez, where's the time gone? So I get her on every Thursday. She comes to our house and I spend the day with her while her mommy and daddy work. Well, Brianna has been off on maternity leave because she had baby Easton and she went back to work this past Monday. So this past Thursday, I was supposed to have both of them for the first time, but I didn't because Ellery was sick with RSV and they were trying to keep Ellery and Easton apart as much as possible so that he didn't catch, you know, what she has. So Brie, God bless her. My heart goes out to all mommies that have to go back to work after maternity leave and, you know, that don't want to go back to work. And Bree's one of them. She was very sad to have to go back to work. And then especially when your baby's sick. You know, Ellery was sick. So Eric, thank God, he is self-employed. He is a barber and him and his best friend own a barber shop. So he's self-employed so he could take time off. So he took Monday and Tuesday off. And anyways, long story short, the little girl, she tried so hard to be happy and have fun, but she was just wanting me to hold her and all that, which was awesome. The only, the only problem with that is I was, I told everyone, well, not everyone, I mean, I told the boys to come over because our sons, Kyle and Ryan, they are 21 and 26. Well, they come over after work every Thursday that they possibly can, which has been consistently, they've been coming over every Thursday after work and they um, want to come and spend time with Ellery. And I'm telling you, she loves her uncles. Oh my gosh. And they, cause they play, they do the funnest stuff with her. And anyways, it's just quite adorable. So I told them I was going to make chili because, you know, it's frigid here in Michigan. And chili, I was just craving chili. And they love my chili. So I had to make chili while Ellery was here. Normally that's not a big deal, but she, uh, she allowed me enough time to get it in, you know, get it all going in, in the pot. But, um, so she was on breathing treatments and she's, you know, was running a fever and oh, it did make me so sad. Well, when Brianna got out of work, she came over with Easton to pick up Ellery and she decided to do her breathing treatment on her before they left in case she fell asleep in the car, then she could just put her in bed. Well, for whatever reason, that last breathing treatment, oh, the poor baby just started coughing so hard that she was like, gagging like she was going to throw up and she could not quit coughing and the, her face was red and she, it was just it was so sad and so I took I took her from Brie so Brie could call Eric and I walked around with her and she fell fast asleep because she didn't get a good nap that day and she fell asleep in my arms so therefore she quit coughing but her breathing was like really labored I mean it was very shallow and very fast and 
Brianna and Eric had already decided to take her into emergency anyways. So that's what they did and she's still in the hospital today. Uh, they thought it was pneumonia. That chest x-ray came back and they thought that was pneumonia, but they did a, a swab of some sort. I don't know, but they tested, tested her for pneumonia and she doesn't have it. She just has RSV, which still is, is horrible. But Brianna um, sends me Snapchats from the hospital and 11 o'clock last night, Valerie was playing and wound up <laughs> being her jovial self again, which was so good to see. So hopefully she gets to come home from the hospital today. Oh, and then, so this was the other thing. I, I wanted so bad to help Brianna. She was afraid that putting Valerie in the car seat she said, well, what if she starts coughing like that while I'm driving? You know, she was just concerned about that. But I was, I'm telling you what, I was dead tired. And, and um, Eric was meeting uh, Brianna at the hospital. And so, I mean, they could have, you know, I thought, gosh, they could be there all night. And I just, I was dead tired. Like I said, I got up at 4 o'clock that morning. So I wanted to help in some way, so I said, well, why don't you leave Easton with us? And this will be my first time watching Easton. <sighs> what was I thinking? No, I'm kidding. No, he, oh my gosh, he's so adorable. So anyways, I kept, we kept Easton. And my husband is such a sweetheart. He said, honey, you go to bed, I'll get him to sleep. Isn't that sweet? And this is my husband that has to get up at four in the morning and gets picked up for work at five in the morning but he tends to be more of a night owl than I am. So, uh, I went to bed. It was like 10, 10, 10 or something like that. And then Kevin came to bed at 10.30, laid Easton in the pack and play at the foot of our bed. And then the little guy started coughing because he's got a, you know, a slight cold. And they're, you know, keeping an eye on that, making sure he doesn't end up as sick as Ellery did. And um, so, you know, with him coughing, I couldn't sleep. So I got up and checked on him because I'm thinking with the coughing, I would have thought he'd have woke up, but he was he was still asleep. So I went into the living room, which is just right down the hallway, so I could still hear him. And I tried to sleep in the chair. And then next thing I know, Kevin brings him out. And he's like, he just stood up. So <laughs> I'm like, okay, give him to me, so... Um, he laid in my, on my chest and slept, which, you know, I'm, I'm hormonal and I run hot. So when I hold these babies, I just, I was burning up. And, uh, then I told, I had told Bree that if you're not going to get him by one o'clock in the morning, then just leave him overnight. So... At 12.30, I'm still awake, by the way. <laughs> At 12.30, Eric called and he said, okay, I'm leaving the hospital now, I'm coming to get Easton. So he got here at like five minutes to one and as soon as they left, I crawled in bed and slept pretty hard until my husband's alarm went off at 4 a.m. And I fell asleep for a little while and then I heard him leave at 5 a.m. And I ended up getting up at like 10 to six because I just, once I'm awake in the morning, I just can't go back to sleep. I don't know what my problem is. I, I blame everything that is wrong with me on hormones. Menopause, whatever you want to call it. So I don't know if... Let's see. Oh. So there was a ton of comments and somehow I missed it. Oh my gosh. See, okay, looking at my computer, I could not tell that there was any comments. That's why I just started talking. Um. <laughs> and then I saw this little arrow, and I clicked the arrow, and there's a ton of comments I missed, you guys. Let's see. Okay, I better go back to where I was. What type of pen do you use to trace your pattern? This is from Linda. Linda, I use whatever I can. 
I have actually used a ballpoint pen when I could not find a fine tip marker. You can use a fine tip Sharpie. Um, I like those Micron uh, pens or markers. But like I said, a ballpoint pen in a pinch will even work. Can you flip it over so we can see the barn outline? I always think my loops are not good on outlines. Only on my second project, learning today with you. Cool, bread and thread by Sean Wright. That's who asked that question. Okay, so I'm flipping it over. I don't know how long ago you asked that question, but like I said, I didn't realize that there were more comments. So here's another tip. When you are punching, let's say words, is the perfect example is words. I would punch tighter, closer to my, my stitches are closer together when I'm punching words than when I'm normally punching, just for the fact that unless the words are two rows, if it's only one row for the words, you wanna punch it super tight because otherwise, if you have spaces in between your, uh, your stitches here, your punches, your loops, whatever you wanna call them, then when you punch around it, it's gonna be really hard to read those words. So these look pretty good. I mean, that's, and th this is a barn, so it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. If some of these disappear as I punch around it, it's not a big deal because it's a barn. But for words especially, you want to punch super tight together. But I, I tend to be a tight puncher anyways. As you can see, my one rows are still, there's no space in between them. Uh, and again, that comes with practice. Um, here's another thought. If you are punching Let's say you get your CTR and you decide you don't want to put that gauge on. So what's going to happen is you're going to have longer loops on the finished side. So when, when you are punching, I'm going to try it. Okay, so when you punch, okay, that's so hard to explain. All right, if you look over here, when you punch these through, when they get on this side, I, I always explain it this way when I'm teaching a class, they kind of blossom like a flower, okay? Because you have three strands of um, embroidery floss and when it, when it comes on the side, it just expands, let's just put it that way. So when you are punching with a longer loop, you might not have to punch as tightly together as I do. You can leave a little bit more space in there because you're gonna have a bigger, it's gonna bloom more, if that makes any sense at all. If you're not, if you're new to punch needle, it might not make any sense to you, but the longer your loop is on the finished side, the more it's gonna puff out. So maybe that's why Liz Matthews, by the way, if you don't know who she is, she has a floss tube channel. Hello from Liz Matthews, and she is all about punch needle. That's her jam. So she said, I believe, in one of her videos that she punches on a two. So that is going to make, I already showed you earlier that the one makes a longer loop than my CTR with that gauge on it, okay? So imagine if you have it on a two, it's gonna be even a longer loop, okay? Which maybe for a beginner, maybe that's what you wanna do. Maybe you don't wanna put the gauge on or maybe you wanna punch, if you get this needle, you wanna punch on a two because it's gonna poof out more on this side and maybe it will be easier for you. I'm just making this up, to be honest. I'm not making, <laughs> the part I'm making up is being that if you are a beginner, maybe you want to punch on a two or maybe you don't want to put the gauge on. I've never thought of that before, but it might make it easier for a beginner because you won't have to worry so much about everything being so tight. But I, like I said, I tend to just punch tight naturally anyways. And it could, it could, it might have to do with me being an artist and I don't like to see the weaver's cloth 
I don't like to see it. And I want my back to look as good as my front, so I tend to punch tight. Um, but not everyone punches the same, so you are going to have to play around with it and see what you like best. Another thing you can do is when you get your pattern, especially if you get a pattern that is smaller and you have lots of space around your design, play around with it. You know, put like before you put the gauge on, do some punching, you know, and then do it really tight and then do it where you have more space in between and then put the gauge on and then punch it tight and then punch it with more space in between and see what look you like better or what feels more comfortable to you. There's nothing to say that you have to do it the way I'm doing it or you have to do it the way Lori Breckland does it or you have to do it the way uh, Liz Matthews does. You're going to find what works best for you and you're going to find that out by just doing it and experimenting with it. That's really, it's like they say there's no cross stitch police. Well, there's no punch needle police either. So do what works for you. I am just showing you how I prefer to do it. Okay, but it doesn't mean that's the only way to do it. Does that make any sense? I hope so. Okay, let me see where we're at with questions. So Quilting Queen 3, so she said, so you don't want any spacing of fabric showing between the rows. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. You can if you are punching with a longer loop on the other side. Okay, Sean Wright said, when using DMC, do you cut lengths or unwind the complete skein? I just cut lengths. It's, I would say it's probably a, a good yard that I cut and then separate into three strands and then just, you know, go from there. What else? Can you punch in any direction? Patty asked that. That's a good question. Um, when, when you are beginning, if you're a beginner, I suggest, until you get the hang of it, that you punch the way I'm doing right here. You always want to make sure that the beveled edge is away from your hand. I prefer to punch away from myself because I, number one, can see where I'm going and where I've been. Also, by punching this way, I am leaning my needle forward because that's the direction I'm going. And I'm sliding, when I pull it out, I'm just sliding it over a little bit and pushing it back down. Now, I could go like this and, and do this, but I've been punching for 15 years, so I, I don't have a problem doing it that way. But when you first begin, just keep turning it and then punch away from yourself. I think that's just the best way to learn. Okay, so now I want to go up, so I'm just going to turn it around, and I'm just going to go back. Well, I thought that was going to fill that all in, but it didn't. So then turn it over, and... But, you know, I've got one, maybe one more punch I need to do there. I'm not going to turn it. I'm just going to go over one. Punch it in, and call it good. I'm going to put another row here because that's bugging me. That's what I like about this. You can just go back in and fill in wherever you want. On my video that I recorded earlier, in case you just hopped on here, maybe you didn't hear me say it, but I traced... This is my one of my next projects. These are so juicy. I love these colors so much. I cannot wait to get that one punched. And this, again, is a large one. But um, I recorded a video showing myself tracing this image onto the weaver's cloth. And, uh, oh my gosh, where was I going with that, you guys? <sighs> oh, I think, what was I going to say? I was going to share with you now, and I totally lost it. <sighs> I don't remember what it was now. Hmm. I don't know. It might be this. 
when I was recording that video, I was talking about how, or the reasons I think that people that do cross stitch or quilting may find it a little bit harder to do punch needle is because when you cross stitch, if you follow that chart and use the exact same false colors that are called for, your finished piece will turn out just like the cover, you know, the photo of the finished piece on the pattern. Same with quilting, you know, you they tell you exactly the measurements of the fabric to cut and you know how to sew it together to get the exact look, you know, that they are showing. Well, with punch needle, it has there's way more give to it. See now I'm punching towards myself, which is not a horrible thing to do. <laughs> I mean, my preference is to punch away from myself, but sometimes if I'm just going a little distance, rather than turning it, I'll just hop right over there and just put a few punches in, whether it's sideways or towards myself or whatever. But anyways, back to what I was saying. Um, punch needle is not necessarily going to look exactly like the photo on the cover because it's going to it, it depends on the needle you're using and if you use a gauge or not if you punch on a line I mean even when you trace it so I don't want you to freak out when you go to trace it and you say well I'm not good at tracing it doesn't look exactly like you know the the paper piece that I traced from don't worry about it I think I think there's um, that's what makes people nervous is there's so many different variables that people are worried it's not going to turn out good. But I have seen people do punch some of my patterns and use different floss colors and uh, you know I can tell maybe they punched outside the line because the head is a little bit bigger on the pumpkin head guy than mine was. Who cares? You know what I mean? It. It, it gives you a little bit more freedom to be creative, I think. Some sometimes that turns people off, though. So I just want you to enjoy it. And like I said, I, I put a list on my last Punch Me video. I put a list of my designs that are simpler, that are smaller, that you could you know do easily if you worked on an hour or two, you know even an hour a night. In a week, you should have it done. You know just some of these smaller designs. So that, for beginners, I recommend something smaller. Okay. Macomb Township. Okay. Deanna, thank you for answering that. That's probably an hour from me, hour south of me. I'm in Otisville. Beth, uh, my, <laughs> my dog started barking too. I knew that would happen. Yep. Oh my gosh. All the dogs are barking. That's, that's too funny. Uh-oh. I don't know what happened, but it looks like my I'm not recording anymore. Stitching with the sisterly's Lincoln dog is hiding under the covers. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. Can you move your camera? Can you put it back, please? Hi, Teresa. And oh, I can't stay long, but what do you do when you're finished with your stitches? Will you? Oh no, your stitches will not pull out. No, while you really do have the start and to start or end of the thread, you really don't have to start or end the threads. No, stop making this so attractive. I don't need another hobby. <laughs> That's funny. Does the fabric say weaver's cloth? Ah, uh, I don't think it says weaver's cloth. It says. <sighs> That's a good question. I'm gonna answer that in my next floss two video. I will show what it what it says on the bolt. Okay, Marie still here. Can somebody comment and let me know if this thing's still recording? Because on my computer it's just got that spinning wheel of death like it's not recording or something. So it could be my internet. I don't know, maybe my phone quit recording. Let's 
let's see. I'm not getting any more comments, so I don't know if I'm even recording. Okay, who is this generally? There is a way to um, block people, but I'm not sure how to do it. It's frozen, but I hear you fine. Huh, lost voice and picture now. Picture frozen, but can hear you. Uh-oh, okay, so there's something wrong with my camera. I mean, my phone. All right, I'm gonna get up and see if I can fix it. Hmm. I don't know what's going on. Well, I guess we're just going to have to end it, you guys. I'm so sorry. There was more I wanted to show and talk about, but um, if there's any questions that I haven't answered, I will, um, my next Floss 2 video, I'm going to be recording that today, so I will do that then. I'm going to have to end this video. I'm so sad. Oh. Okay, this is what happened. My phone's about to die. So I'm going to end this.